winner of the annual Complainer of the Year Award goes to David! Oh, 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 wow! I can't believe I finally won! Hey, first and foremost, I want to thank the Academy of Grumbling and Complaining. Thanks for nothing, that is! <laughs> I should have won this award years ago. Yeah, me too! Yeah, that's right. Oh, and that dinner they served us tonight, they call that food? Could the bread have been any more flat and stale? I would have had an easier time eating my shoe. You got that right. Yeah, and quail again? That's what you guys serve at the ceremony every year. Would it be too much to ask for a cheeseburger? Or a big fat steak? You got that right. In fact, I sometimes wish I was back at the Academy of Forced Labor. It was a terrible academy, but their award ceremony dinners were amazing. Anyhow, thanks again for the award. You guys are great, and this trophy is beautiful. Hey! That sounded like a compliment! Yeah, take his trophy away! He doesn't deserve it! What? Wait a second! You can't... Hey, David! What's wrong? Why do you look so down? I can't believe it! I've been grumbling and complaining all year long to win that award. And then I slip up just one time, and they take it away from me. What are you talking about? You know, AGAC, the Academy of Grumbling and Complaining. They give an award every year to the person who complains the most. David, that doesn't sound like the kind of award you want to win. Oh, you can say that again. The dinner at the award ceremony was terrible. The bread was stale, and the quail wasn't even cooked. Seriously. That bird still had feathers, and it sat there on my plate looking at me like, you really gonna eat me, bro? And then he said to me, hi, my name is Gary. Like, really? How am I supposed to eat that? Okay, that's kind of weird, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is you shouldn't be winning an award for complaining because complaining isn't good. Besides, you kind of sound like the Israelites back in Bible times. Wait, what do you mean? What I mean is that when they were wandering in the desert, they were a bunch of complainers. In fact, if there was an award for grumbling and complaining back then, they probably would have won it every year. <laughs> yeah, well, they better not say anything nice about the award or they'll get it taken away. It's okay, David. It's just a cheap plastic award anyway. At one point, though, the complaining got so bad that they actually told Moses that they wished they could go back to Egypt where they were slaves, just so they could have better food to eat. What? Who would say something like that? I know, right? And by the time we get to the book of Numbers in the Bible, things are really starting to get out of control. Oh, uh, the book of Numbers. That's the fourth book of the Bible, right? That's right. It was written by Moses, and it tells about how Israel prepared to enter the promised land, but they sinned and were punished instead. Hey, you know what? Let's do what we've been doing for the other books of Moses. Since the book of Numbers is kind of long, let's do a fast-forward review of the book. Then, when it's over, press pause on the video and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play, and we'll see you back here. Welcome to the fast-forward review of the book of Numbers. After the Israelites left Egypt, God continued to take care of his people in the desert, but his people continued to complain. When God heard them complaining, he became upset and sent a raging fire through the edge of their camp. Everyone ran around as their tents burned up, but not Moses. He dropped to his knees and prayed that God would forgive them. When God heard Moses' prayer, he forgave the Israelites and the fire went out. Later, when the Israelites finally reached the promised land, God told them to move in and make it their home. There was just one problem though. There were already people living there, big people. Some of the Israelites cried out, 
We're like tiny grasshoppers compared to them. They'll attack and kill us. Not everyone was scared though. Two of their leaders, Joshua and Caleb, spoke up and said, don't be afraid. God will be with us. But the people refused to listen to their leaders and they refused to go. God was not happy. In fact, he was so upset that he wanted to destroy the Israelites. But Moses dropped to his knees again and begged for him to show forgiveness. When God heard Moses' prayer, he forgave the Israelites. But because of their lack of faith, the Israelites had to turn around and wander back into the desert for another 40 years. God told Moses that none of the grown-ups would ever get to see the promised land. Only when they had all died and the kids had grown up would the Israelites get to enter the promised land. And that is God's story in the book of Numbers. Whoa. That's kind of sad. I guess I didn't realize that complaining was that big of a deal. Yeah, well, for the people of Israel, it was that plus a lot of other things. They refused to listen to their leaders, and they wouldn't obey God either. And God takes those sins seriously. That's right. And even though God forgave them, they still had to suffer the consequences of their sin. Yeah, because of their sin, the Israelites had to wander around the desert for another 40 years. And, you know, believe it or not, it's kind of like that for us, too. In fact, I want to show you what I'm talking about with a little challenge called Sin and Consequences. Okay, I'm scared. That sounds creepy. <laughs> Don't be scared. It's not so bad. Oh, good. If you win, that is. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's how it works. I'm going to put a sin card in the middle of the desk. Then on the count of three, we each have to randomly flip over one of our consequence cards. Whosoever consequence card best matches the sin gets a point. Okay, I think I get it, but can you give me an example? Yeah, so let's say the sin is throwing a rock through your neighbor's window. If I flip a card that says, you have to pay for the damage, and you flip over a card that says, no one will believe what you say anymore, then I get the point, because my consequence matches the sin more. Okay, so what are we playing for? Good question. After three rounds, the person with the fewest points has to spin the wheel of misfortune! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Even more consequences. All right, what's the first sin? Ooh, stealing. Okay, so we've got five random consequences. Okay. So we... just randomly pick a card and okay. hopefully it matches. All the right, sin. let's. Ready? See? Yeah. One, two, two three. three. All right. I picked your neighbor won't let you play with their dog anymore. Okay. Mm. I picked people don't believe what you say anymore. Stealing. Mm. I, wow, I think... I you, think I get the point. I think you do. Mm -hmm. Although, I guess if you're stealing things, maybe your neighbor would say, well, I don't want you to play with my dog because you might steal my dog. But I don't know, that's a little bit of a stretch. I feel like mine works a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, I think so. That was a good round. Yeah, ready for I the think next you time? get the point on that one. All okay. right, yes, 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 okay. Here's the next sin card. Okay, ooh, gossiping. gossiping. All right, Each okay, way. randomly. I okay. am going to pick. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. You hurt people's feelings and lose friends. Mm, that matches really well. Yeah, what's yours? Nobody trusts you being around their stuff. Okay. Oh. I think mine, this sounds know. like a consequence that matches gossiping. Yes. I could see this being a natural consequence. Yes, you get the point. My point get for that point. one. Okay, so 
one. One so more. One to one. Yep. Okay. We have one more sin. One more sin. Ready? All right. What is it? Okay. Lying. Okay. Lying. So what would be a natural consequence to lying? All right. Mm, okay. Ready? Yes. One. Two. two three. three. Okay. People don't believe what you say anymore. Ah, that's, that's gonna be a hard to one that. to beat. You have to pay money for the damage you did. And no way! Your no way! Matches. Mine totally matches yes. that one. Yes, it does. That is a point for me. And that means I got two, one. you've got one, and that means I am the winner, and that means you have to spin the Wheel of Misfortune. <laughs> All right, Britain, it's time to spin. Okay. Here I go. Socks. Oh, Britain, this is going to be lots of fun. Well, let me go get you a stinky sock. You know, that was a lot, oh, sorry, excuse me. You know, that was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's because you didn't have to smell that horrible sock. But you know what? I think it'll be worth it when you see this. Oh, wow. You're right, that was worth it. David, I'm not finished yet. Oh, oh yeah, I, I knew that. Oh. Keep going. Well, just like Moses did, we too can confess our sins to God. We can tell God about the wrong things we've done and ask him for forgiveness. And when we do that, God forgives our sins. It's as if they disappear. Whoa. That is so cool. The sin is like completely gone. Yeah, but does that mean that the consequences go away? Oh, oh uh, let's see. Nope, they are still there. That's right. The consequences of sin didn't disappear for the Israelites and they don't disappear for us either. You know what? You're right. Even though God forgives us, our sins can hurt us, and they can hurt other people too. That's why God takes sin so seriously. Yeah, sin is really bad, but I've got some good news. Even though most consequences don't just disappear, there is one consequence that does. And our Bible verse for today can help us figure out what it is. Look at what it says. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. You know what? That makes me wonder something. If the consequence of our sin is death or forever separation from God, why do you think God gives us the gift of eternal life? Press pause and discuss. Everybody, welcome back. That was a tough question, so let's see if we can help you out. The worst consequence for our sin is death. And I don't mean the kind of death where you fall to the ground and stop breathing. 
Yeah, when the Bible says the wages of sin is death, it means that sin separates us from God forever and ever. Right. But when Jesus died on the cross, not only did he make our sin disappear, he made death disappear too. And now, because of that, we no longer have to be separated from God. When we love and follow Jesus, we get eternal life. That means we get to live with God forever in heaven. So good. And so true. Once again, we had so much fun hanging out with you all. We love you guys. Your church loves you. And most of all, Jesus loves you. Yeah, we can't wait to see you again next week. Until then, bye, everybody. Bye. <clears throat> Thanks to the Academy for finally seeing that I deserve this award way more than David. I will put this piece of garbage trophy where it truly belongs, in my dumpster with all the other trash I collected. <laughs>